Hey guys, so a little bit excited today. This is the first hopefully of many uh, gold recovery mailbag editions. Um, I had a subscriber contact me and was asking me to have a look at a couple of different things for him that he has access to and he wasn't sure whether it was worth the money he was paying for it. So one of them is pretty easy. He's got these boards here, which overall are a, a very low quality board, low value board, but they do have some nice gold fingers there, some big ones there, and some more in the corner there. And so what he was hoping for with these is that I could just run a quick check on these using my, my standard method and just confirm that they are in fact hard gold plating. And then I figured what I might as well do while I'm busy is try and work out, um, assuming that they are hard gold plated, what the approximate gold value in a board like this is going to be with those fingers, just to give him some idea of how much he should be paying for a board like that. And the other thing is something quite interesting. So he's got these little, uh, these small little gold balls uh, look like that, and they come from from switches on some old circuit boards and there seems to be a little bit of rumor around that these are going to be solid gold. I personally think there's just about zero chance that these would be solid gold. There's not really any very good reason why any manufacturer would ever make uh, switch contact balls like this out of solid gold when plated gold will do fine. But I figured what we could do is, is a two-pronged approach. Firstly, we'll um, just throw one into a little bit of the nitric acid solution, so 50% of 70% of nitric acid solution, and just see if there's any reaction at all. And if the gold plating is relatively thick, which I think might be the case, and there's not much happening there, I might have to just uh, weigh these and then dissolve them all in aqua regia. Have a look to see with a stannous chloride test whether there is any precious metal in solution. There probably will be, even though it will be very small. And then I'll have a go at dropping the gold out. But because there's, you know, even if these are hard gold plated, there's almost nothing there. It's going to be very difficult to, to weigh the result. But uh, yeah, always worth a try. Cool, so I'll get the microscope set up and we'll have a look at some of these fingers as well as... Um, one of these little balls in the nitric acid and just see what it does. Okay, back soon. Okay guys, so at the top of the screen there we have one of the fingers that I chopped off that uh, board we want to test and at the bottom I've got a known enig, e so electroless nickel immersion gold plated board so we know that's a very thin gold plating and I'm just using that as a control to make sure that my acid is testing correctly. So we'll put it little bit on there, put a little bit on there, and then uh, sometimes we get a very quick reaction, but uh, it might take a few moments to, for the reaction to get started. So I will uh, start the stopwatch and I'll be back with you guys when there is something to see there. Okay, so I may as well just have left the video running because as you can see there, about 30 seconds later, our ENIC sample is reacting quite violently. Our test sample actually also is having a little bit of reaction in the middle there. But I believe that is only where the, uh, the gold plating was damaged through insertion and removal. So I suspect that probably this top, uh, this top bit is, is going to be uh, hard gold but I'll let this reaction run for about 15 minutes or so and then we'll have a look at what's left. If you have a look here at the, at the known ENIG sample, you can see the level of reaction we expect from ENIG, so um, it's quite a dramatic difference from what we're seeing here on what I believe is going to be the hard gold sample. So we'll leave these to, uh, to react. Um, in the meantime, I have placed one of those little balls zoomed out here. I've placed one of those little balls inside the same nitric acid solution that we're using for that test. So I'll just get that under the microscope and we'll have a quick look at that and just see if we see any reaction there just with the nitric acid. And I think we do. 
Yes, so as you can see there, the nitric acid has made its way through the hard gold plating and it is probably reacting with the base metal underneath. So I'd say that it's pretty much going to be a no-brainer that those things are going to be um, gold plated over brass or some, something like that. Um, the fact that it's reacting so nicely with nitric acid suggests that it's probably a copper based compound. But I'll let that reaction proceed. I think at the same time what we might do, seeing as this appears to be working, is we'll place the rest of the balls in there as well. They might as well um, might as well uh, etch away all of the all of the brass and see if we can end up with a few little floating foils from that. Cool. So I'll be back a little bit later. Okay, guys. So as you've seen from the time lapse, so this this has been going for about ten minutes or so, and you'll see we've got a very nice reaction from those uh, those little gold-plated balls. So very clear at this point that they are uh, just gold plated they're definitely some form of copper on the inside and um, yeah very nice reaction from those i'll let this reaction go to completion and just see if we end up with little gold foils floating around i'd suspect it'd be very nice if they actually stuck together because as you eat the base metal from the inside uh, you expect at some point those little gold bubbles will start floating from the uh, from the gases produced by the nitric acid consuming the copper inside. So yeah, I'll just keep an eye on that. But I can also see, um, if I zoom out a bit, you guys might be able to see too. Yes, you can see there the solution is turning a little bit... Uh, the solution is turning a little bit blue as well, so another indication that we're dealing with, with copper there. So uh, yeah, unfortunately... Didn't think there was much chance that those would be solid gold, and uh, it appears that I was right about that. I think uh, the other thing we'll quickly check now while we're here is uh, we'll get this out of the way. And let's have a quick look at those, um, those two circuit boards we were checking. So there they are there. Let me just get some, get some more light. And if we zoom in on that one there see the reaction is the reaction is pretty much stopped but that's probably just because the the nitric acid has been consumed by the copper underneath there's still a little bit of reaction happening but i suspect if we gave that a scratch test now yeah so you see we've got um we've basically got very fine gold powder so that's exactly what we expect but um i'd say this is going to be a very nice hard gold plating so there's absolutely no no real reaction happening there on that one so yeah I'd say clearly that is hard gold so uh, let's go back and uh, do some math so we can we can see uh, what the actual gold value on each of these boards is likely to be so I'll be back in a moment okay guys so it looks like after an hour or so that um, gold foil on that finger is completely gone completely loose as you can see there give that side a scratch and see if we can just have a look here see if we can remove him yeah it's still a little bit stuck on the end but as you can see coming off in very nice solid foils like that so good sign of a nice thick gold plating you can also see there I've been I've been giving some of these little balls a bit of a squish like the one in the corner there and um, so yeah just final final proof that they are definitely going to be you squish that one and he drops to the bottom final proof that they are a probably like a hard gold shell over the top of a you can kind of squish them empty and they'll sink a hard gold shell over the top of some kind of copper base or probably a brass a brass base so um yeah unfortunately as as predicted not solid gold but um yeah looking good okay guys just to round this video off i'm not sure how um legible my scribbles are going to come out on the video so i'll just talk our way through it quickly um we had 10 of these big contacts and we have 36 total of these little contacts uh, so 
15 big contacts are 4.5 by 9 millimeters each. The 36 small contacts are 1.8 by 8.5 millimeters each. And we're going to assume standard hard gold plating, which is in the 25 to 40 micro inch range. And I've averaged that to 32.5 micro inches, which is 0 0.83 microns. So we've got the length, the width, and the thickness of each of those foils. Uh, we know that there in one millimeter there is 1,000 microns, so the total volume of gold on those sets of fingers. So for the top ones, uh, 10 of 10, 10 foils at 4.5 by 9 by 0 0.0083 millimeters gives us a total of 0 0.336 cubic millimeters of gold. Uh, for the, the smaller fingers, we get a total of 0 0.457. Uh, cubic millimeters of gold which gives us a total gold volume per board of about 0 0.793 cubic millimeters the density of gold is known and that is 19.3 grams per cubic centimeter but we are working in cubic millimeters and we know that there is a thousand cubic millimeters in each cubic centimeter so one cubic millimeter of gold is going to weigh in 0 0.0193 grams so the total total weight of gold on each of these boards is going to be as 0 0.793 multiplied by 0 0.0193, which gives us 0 0.0153 grams of gold. So 0 0.01 grams of gold. And we know, um, I always roughly work on in New Zealand dollars of $50 per gram of gold. So the value of one of these boards is about 77, 78 cents in gold value. So depending on what the total weight of this board is and what they're paying per kilo, you have to bargain that even on a good day you're only going to get about one dollar of gold out of each of these boards. So yeah, that's the uh, end of this video. Hopefully that was a little bit interesting to some of you. And uh, yeah, catch you guys next time.